In order to have the privilege to properly appreciate a cup of Colombian coffee, it is very important to know about the work and effort of the countless persons who every day guarantee the quality of the final product for consumers all over the world. The combined efforts of these people has, over the past decades, developed into a system that sustains its high quality standards that is not easily replicable by any other coffee producing region in the world. Historical records indicate that Jesuits brought coffee seeds to New Granada, circa 1730. Although there are different versions of this event, and it is said that the plant entered the country from the east, the southwest of the province of Antioquia is recognized as a good producer of coffee. Now its coffee farmers want to grow the highest quality coffee. And to learn more about this, we went to the town of Valparaiso, a municipality southeast of Medellin, where they work with special coffee. Traditionally, the southwest of Antioquia has lived off coffee. For example, in Valparaiso, 500 families live off coffee, but no more than 20 live off cattle. Cardamom is the second most important economic activity in this part of the southwest. Even above cattle, in the sense that most of the small farmers benefit from it. You will find that the great strength of this region of Antioquia, of the southwest, is coffee. No matter what the price of coffee might be, either high, mediocre, or low, it has always been the means of sustenance for the majority of families in the region. Let's now talk about special coffee. The Colombian Federation of Coffee Growers considers a coffee gourmet when it is perceived and valued by consumers as having some trait that consumers are willing to pay a premium price for. For this coffee to effectively be special, the added value that consumers are willing to pay must translate into an added benefit to the producer. Let us now hear Gonzalo Gaviria and Raul Noreña talk about the differences between standard or traditional coffee and special coffee. Standard coffees are those that are cultivated without any value added characteristics, those that have no special added value. You just grow it and see what happens without considering added value. You are mainly interested in producing large amounts of coffee by any means necessary, harvesting it and taking it to market. That is what you can call standard coffee. Traditional coffee is what we have been working, Arabica-type coffees that are grown with other methodologies and other practices that are different from those implemented nowadays with these varieties, which are valued for resiliency, production yields, and resistance to plagues. So you have to implement a completely different management system, which, under certain conditions and with special care, can lead you to produce coffees that are truly special. Why are they special? Because the way we manage the coffee produces its return in the quality of a cup of coffee and how it tastes. So this is what it takes in this coffee-growing region to obtain a truly special coffee. The care put into managing this type of coffee is what makes the product come out completely clean. The product that comes out is very good. The product that comes out is very good. 
And the reason we call it special coffee is that even though it's all coffee and there are only a few varieties, the weather conditions and the growing environment together yield a cup of coffee that is completely different to other coffees in other areas. A coffee is special when it's labeled as such because it has certain specific traits, such as coming from a certain altitude or coming from a good region. It's a clean coffee, a coffee that's been cultivated well, one that has had good control of plagues and diseases, a coffee whose environment is controlled and that has received a large dose of love can be called special. The coffee is not special in and of itself. Coffee is special according to the conditions and circumstances of how it's being produced. And it is the case that coffee is currently being produced in an economic climate that does not allow growers to generate ample profits. It can generate minimal economic sustenance. Coffee is now being cultivated with the greatest respect and consideration for the environment that surrounds it. With full payment of benefits, with respect for the social conditions of the surrounding region, and with respect for the families who make their living from coffee. Del medio ambiente, del medio que la circunda, perdón, de las comunidades que, que de alguna manera viven del café, porque el café tiene una gran trascendencia. Because coffee generates a great deal of jobs, directly and indirectly. Now, let us review some of the conditions that are necessary to grow coffee with high quality standards. Coffee is a bush that adapts very well to climate conditions and to high altitudes. It grows very well at an altitude between 1,200 and 1,800 meters. And in a region like Antioquia, which has a very challenging, steep topography, it has adapted in a very special way. And that contributes to coffees from this region having a very special texture they yield a very good grain. It contributes to the grain being very full of sugar, very full of fiber. And so the almond-shaped grain will be very thick, and it will sell very well at market. Don Gonzalo Gaviria also told us about the process required to obtain special coffee from planting all the way to the processing stage. Special coffee is born out of carefully managing each step of the process paying special attention. Con, con especial cuidado, con especial atención. Notice that's when it starts to become special, with special care in the germination bed so that it becomes a productive and quality bed. Bien productivo, bien eh, calificado, del germinador pasarlo and from there to the seedling stage, where they are planted in well-fertilized soil without toxins. Then you place the seedling in an environment where it does not get sunlight indiscriminately. You have to find the exact right time to transplant it to the field, and you have to pay attention to the different fertilizations and anti-disease fumigations that would allow you to grow a good coffee bush. Then come the other treatments, and there we have to make sure to fertilize at the right time. You have to perform the recommended fertilizations, at least three are recommended, 
so that the coffee plant can develop into a well-developed tree, into a tree that is productive when it comes time to harvest. And it's also important that when the tree is in production, the grains are picked at the right time, managing what we call the re-re, to avoid the return of plagues and insects, such as the coffee borer beetle, which can affect the grain. We have to make sure that those who perform the harvest do so with a great sense of responsibility and that they only pick mature beans and don't mix green beans with ripe or semi-ripe grains. Since this can really distort the flavor of the beverage, and another key factor is to be careful when it comes to processing the coffee. Many people and many coffee growers are interested in having a bush produce a large yield, or they're interested in the coffee plant producing a good grain and high productivity. But you can tell that the coffee deteriorates during the processing stage. I think that the processing of the coffee is 50% of the work. Later, Don Gonzalo Gaviria told us about the current trends in the coffee market in Colombia. It's the way to make it in a new era of coffee. Up until five years ago, the coffee-consuming countries asked Colombia to have 30% of its coffee exports consist of diversified coffees, while 70% of what we exported was standard coffee, devoid of any certification. The world has changed so much, and the world of coffee has become very demanding. And today, the countries that consume coffee are demanding that 70% of Colombia's exports should be certified and only 30% should be standard coffee. People's palates have become progressively more refined. It's an invitation for small coffee growers to think about putting out their own brands of coffee because we can't keep doing the same thing we did 100 years ago, harvesting coffee and selling it as is to cooperatives or to the Federation so that the Federation and other individuals could export it abroad and it would generate employment abroad, not here. If we put out our own brands, we can generate employment and make sure those jobs remain here make sure the quality product remains here as well. And we can start forcing the coffee authorities in Colombia to start exporting roasted coffee once and for all, not just green coffee. Here, we have the wherewithal to manage good roasting companies, and we can begin to export roasted coffees with the quality the modern world demands. <laughs>